Good morning, church. Uh, would, you, yeah, would you please prepare your hearts towards Jesus as we are preparing the worship service? So as Martha is going to play piano, just stay in silence and thinking about Jesus Christ who died for us on the cross. And just prepare your hearts, okay? Thank you, Martha. Good morning, church. Oh, my. Jack and Brenda came back. I didn't see you before kneeling here. Oh, my. Welcome back. And we have several visitors. Um, well, I forgot to, uh, to remember all, all the names, but Lynn... Okay, raise your hands if you are visitors here. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four. Welcome. And there is a Jedi. 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 Okay, welcome. Welcome. And Kobe. Okay, welcome, Kobe. Raise your hand, Kobe. Okay. Oh, Jessica's boyfriend. I'm going to miss Jessica. <laughs> welcome, welcome, each one, of, each one of you. If you have a bulletin today, this morning, um, let me just highlight the bullet points of our announcements. Uh, farmers to families this coming Wednesday, right, Steve? 
and uh, we need more volunteers. Last, uh, last time we had 13 volunteers, so there was a competition among the volunteers. Oh, this is my turn. Oh, no, my turn. So it was a good problem, okay? <laughs> You'll be more than welcome to be part of that ministry. Farmers to families, that is a distributing a free food boxes to, to our local communities. Observing guidelines, if you are fully vaccinated, wearing a mask is optional. But uh, to consider your health condition, you may want to wear a mask for yourself. And uh, small groups, we have a new Disciples Sunday School class every Sunday morning at 9.30 in TMNC, which means a fellowship hall outside the building. And children's Sunday school at 9.30 on the second floor of the educational building over there. And the young adults at 5 p.m. Probably today, I have no idea. Nobody is here. They're going to gather somewhere sometime. God knows. And see you at the storehouse Wednesdays at 6 p.m via Zoom for those who want to stay connected and empowered by the word of God and fellowship in love. Please let me know if you need a small group um, to stay connected with the church. I'll give you, I'll send you, send you um, a Zoom link. Crochet class Thursdays at 10 a.m. in the parlor. And church office hours as it is. Pastor's office hours as it is shepherding groups. So is there any announcement? Got, got more? Okay. Where are you? Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, a lot of things. Okay. 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 Please remember, add more and add more in your prayers. Anything else? Okay. It is time for passing the peace. Look at each other and wave at each other. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Wow, we have choir. Oh, my. Woo. Okay, would you rise as we declare uh, our vision statement? Oh, Matt Grizzard is coming back, too. Okay, Matt, welcome back. <laughs> okay. Let's read this together. Oxford First United Methodist Church is Jesus-centered, grace-filled, and committed to transforming lives to Christ. In all times and all places, God is with us. Waiting us in all. Shout for joy. Sing praises to God. Get ready to become disciples for Jesus. Amen. Let us, let us do opening prayer together. Lord of healing and mercy, remind us again of your power to heal our lives from fears and mistrust. Open our hearts so power and your great compassion for us. Give us healing and make us agents of peace for you in this, your world. Amen. Let us sing together.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. It is time for offertory and altar prayer. For in-person worshipers, you can drop off your offerings in the place where you enter and exit the sanctuary. For online worshipers, please remember mailing in your offerings to the church post office box. Along with our monetary offering, we also offer ourselves to God. So bring your anxiety, fear, concern, and desire to the altar. Altar is often for you to, to kneel down before God. I believe this time is sacred for each one of us. Just be honest to God and confess, talk to Him, and listen to Him. Hear God's voice for you. Surrender, trust me, and I love you. Let us pause in prayer.
Would you bow with me? Heavenly Father, this morning, we are coming before you. It is so good to be at the sanctuary, your house of worship. Father, no matter what happened last week, no matter how we struggle in our lives, Father, we are here before you. We are here to worship you. We are here to ask for forgiveness of our sins, asking for another chance of life, God. Father, you are so gracious and merciful. You never fail to forgive us, love us. Your grace and mercy and love abound in our lives, God. We praise you for who you are and what you have done for us, God. You are such a wonderful, amazing Heavenly Father. Father, there is no one like you who deserves our praises, glories, and honors, God. Father, so many times we get lost in our spiritual journey. So many times we forget you. So many times we fail to love our neighbors as you commanded us to do. Forgive us. Restore our spirit. And help us to walk with you in such a way to honor you, please you, and glorify your holy name, God. Father, we are so blessed to become the citizen of this country, God. But we see so many violence, discord, and confusion in this country. Father, save us from pride and arrogance, and from evil ways. Father, fashion us into one united people in the forgiveness of Jesus' love, God. And Father, we are asking that you will grant to the presence of the United States and governor of this state and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Father, we are praying that you fill them with the love of truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve these people in your fear, God. Father, I'm asking that You will make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Father, Help our church to be the continuing resource of hope and encouragement in these times of uncertainty, God. Inspire our hearts to be the vessel, divine vessel, to reach out to those who need Jesus Christ. Father, I'm asking for those who are sick and fighting against the sickness and cancer. Father, in your mercy, hear our prayers. It is time for the congregation to lift up those names who need our prayers.
in your mercy, God. Hear our prayers. Father, I want to also pray, pray for those who are visiting our church this morning. You know their situations, God. You know their sufferings and hardships and desires and concerns, and they need hope and they need your spiritual touch. Father, I'm asking you to restore their broken hearts and guide their paths according to your will. Father, help our church to be the place where we welcome everyone in your love and grace, Father. I'm praying for your guidance and strength and vision for our youth and children and young adults. Father, we love you. We honor you, Father. We are here to worship you. Be glorified and watch over us, each one of us, and fill our hearts with your spirit, with a new hope, and help us to move on no matter what. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let us look at each other one more time and say to your neighbors sitting together, I love you. God bless you. Do it. Love you. God bless you.
Amen. Angie, it's great to get our choir back. Wow. Thank you again. And uh, as I see the visitors this morning, as we are having a worship together, I know your feeling when you are the only person who don't belong to this church. I, I've been there so many times. <laughs> And uh, let me tell you this. This church is very welcoming, loving, caring congregation. They love Jesus. Amen? And they are a very mission-minded, mission-driven church. They are ready and willing to achieve God's will, no matter what. So, I know your feeling. You feel awkward, strange. <laughs> But it takes time. Give it a try. One more time. Two more times. Three more times. Three more months. One more year. <laughs> And then... Give it a try to be part of this wonderful church. You'll be more than welcome. God bless you. God bless you. Okay. Today we have a problem with the back screen. So I have to um, rely on this slide. <laughs> Or that slide. So sorry about your inconvenience. Okay. Would you rise as we read to the scripture? Okay. It is Mark chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. Let me go first. Let us read this responsibly, okay? He also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, and uh, then the head, and the full kernel in the head. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? Like a mustard seed. which is the smallest of all. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. Read this together. He did not say anything to them without using a parable But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Do you like gardening? I know that we have a gardening specialist <laughs> somewhere, right? And uh, as a matter of fact, by the help of Vivian Soister, <laughs> I, I would try a small box uh, of gardening uh, in, a, in a community garden, and, but it didn't work very well. <laughs> my bad. But someday, I, when I can afford to buy my own house, I'm willing. I want to grow some vegetables and flowers in the garden. I'm a very sensitive guy. <laughs> As I know, there are some great gardeners at this church. I found uh, some pictures of flowers, beautiful flowers that our church families grew in their gardens. Look at this. Try to figure out whose garden it is. Quiz, Lewin! Yes! Woohoo! And then another one. Whose garden is this? Lewin again! Woo! Whose garden is it? Susan, oh my, how did you know, Susan? <laughs> Whose garden is this? 
season again. And what about this? It is a hard one. Oh, this. Brenda Bill. Oh, okay. Please help me understand about gardening. What are the most important three things for starting gardening? Seed, so soil, water. Okay. Is there sunshine? <laughs> it is beyond our control. <laughs> I guess my question is now, do you know how the seed germinates and grows? Is there any your part to germinate the seed? To grow the seed? No, nobody knows how this happened. It is not our part, but the creator's, right? This Sunday's gospel has tell Jesus and telling two different stories pointing to the reign of God. Jesus' main teaching is about the kingdom of God. And he proclaims that God is getting more ready to fulfill his promise so that we have to repent and believe the goodness of Jesus. Right? So the Greek word for kingdom is basileia, that means reign, rule, realm, or empire. It would be better to translate the kingdom of God as the rule or reign of God. Are you with me? Okay, kingdom of God means the rule or reign of God. And this realm is inaugurated by Jesus Christ. In his teaching, Jesus uses parables with agricultural image because Jesus' largest audience probably were Galilean, Galilean farmers, so they can easily understand his word. One of the stories is about the mystery of the growing seed. And the other story is about the mustard plant. Let me go first. In the first story, Jesus tells, he uses the metaphor of a farmer who plants a seed. Then the farmer walks away and lets God to do, uh, do the rest of the work. The word of Jesus to us are like a seed awaiting, awaiting germination and taking time to take root. In this passage, we find that the farmers, the farmer plays an essential role, but the farmer does not cause the seed to grow, but only God does. The highlight on this parable about kingdom of God is that the process of growth is for God's work who created the seed to grow and mature. It is God's part, not our parts. So with the parable of a sower, we can put ourselves into a farmer's role concerning mission. It reminds us of mission day or God, God's mission. Mission day means the mission of God. And God is the subject of God's mission. And we are invited to participate in God's calling, God's mission. So one thing we know for sure is that the growth is up to Christ, not to us. So we know who gives the growth and the harvest, but we don't know how. So our job is to obey and wait and be surprised. We also are sure that there will be growth and harvest, not just at our direction or command. The work of Jesus among us are often mysterious and invisible. The growth of God's realm, God's kingdom is not on our timetable. So what you, need to do, what you need to do is to be obedient and patient and faithful. So we cannot, we can continue to believe that a new creation is growing because God who created one, uh, created once has promised to recreate. Therefore, we patiently continue planting a seed and waiting for the growth even if it does not come quickly. So in the second story, Jesus compares the growth of God's kingdom to the germination and growth of the tiny mustard seed. Mustard 
is an herb that was supposed to have some medicinal properties, but mostly mustard is a weed. It is a pest, something to be pulled from the gardens. Also, it is not a very impressive plant. One can imagine the impact of the um, parable of the mustard seed upon struggling small, tiny, early Christian congregations. So Jesus says, kingdom of God is like a tiny mustard seed that grows into a giant bush. Look at this picture. The mustard seed is the smallest seed on the earth. It directly prepares us for the contrast between the tiny seed and the large bush. We see the tiny seed, and then we are surprised by this giant bush. Right? What a contrast between them. The energetic growth of the mustard plant leads us to imagine similar energy in the dominion of God. The beginning of the kingdom of God is like the mustard seed that begins as something small, insignificant, but through God's mysterious work, it becomes greater and greater and greater. We just sow the seed, then wait to be surprised by the soul in which God's word takes root. Source, source are people of great faith. To plant a seed means to put yourself at the mercy of the future, to risk farming failure, to hazard your work to factors beyond your control. We hoped for harvest, never guaranteed, but still harvest is promised. So these two parables, like so many of Jesus' parables, don't explain or define much about the kingdom of God exactly. But Jesus invites us to imagine a world of being transformed by God so that things that are considered insignificant are revisioned as the way God works to reclaim the world. So let me share two different stories that happened in, in Korea and the United States. The first two American missionaries arrived in Korea on Easter Sunday in 1885. One is a pres Presbyterian missionary, Horace Grant Underwood, and the other one is a Methodist missionary, Henry Appengeller. Let me share the story of Underwood. Look at the picture. Underwood is in the middle, is sitting in the middle. He, op he opened a Christian orf orphanage in Seoul, the capital, founded the first Presbyterian church in 1887, published the first Korean hymnal, and chaired, chaired the board of translators of the scriptures into Korean until his death. During his 31 years of ministry, working primarily as an educator, Underwood published one of the earliest written Korean English dictionaries and devoted to educational ventures. However, conversions didn't really take off until after the wars in 1950. Here is his prayer, which reflects on his agony and suffering as he planted a seed of the gospel into the hearts of Korean people at the time. A prayer of Underwood. Lord, nothing is visible at this moment. Lord, you have planted us on this barren and poor land where not even, even a single tree can grow tall in, enough. It is such a miracle that we could come to this land across the wide Pacific Ocean. Nothing is, where am I? Is visible, though only stained darkness can be seen. Only Korean people chained with poverty and superstition can be seen. They don't even know why they are chained, what suffering is. They just distrust us and express anger to us as we tell them how to take away their suffering. The thoughts of Korean men are not visible. The mind of this government is not visible. We are afraid that we do not see what to do. Yet, 
Lord. We'll obey. We believe that you begin your work as we humbly obey. And that the day will come when our spiritual eyes will see your work. We believe that we'll see the future of the face of Korea. Although we are as if st standing on a desert with bare hands. Although we are condemned to be Western devils. We believe that the day will come when they will rejoice with tears, realizing that they are one with our spirit in Christ, and that we, we all have one kingdom and one Father in heaven. Although there is no church to worship you, no school to study, although this land is filled with the doubt of suspicion, contempt, and disdain, we believe that in the near future, this land will become a land of blessing. We cannot overlook God's word. Done. What did you feel when, you, when I read that, that prayer? Can we imagine how hard it was for that missionary to take courage, take courage and continue to sow the seed of the gospel into the hearts of the Korean people at the time? When there was nothing visible. He might have felt terrified, afraid, and frustrated. At that time, Korea was one of the poorest and most aid-dependent countries in the world. With a poor capita income, less than those of Haiti and Ethiopia at the time. If South Korea were a Disney princess, she would be Cinderella oppressed and abused for years by Japan and China. The country finally broke free in the early 1950 after World War II and the Korean War. However, today South Korea, South Korea's economy ranks the 12th largest in the world. Can you believe that? Some of you might have Samsung Galaxy, phone, Galaxy phones or LG phones. Or you might drive Hyundai or Kia Motors or LG or Samsung appliances, right, at your home. South Korea is the first and the only country in the world history that turned from the beneficiary of the world aid to the benefactor for other countries. The only country in the world history. Do you see the seed planted by the missionary a long time ago? By 1870, 18% of the population was Christian in, in Korea. By 2000, it was 31%. The 2005 South Korean census showed that 29.2% of the population is Christian. So the capital of South Korea contains 11 of the largest world Christian congregations. Again, 11 of the world, 12 largest Christian congregations. Can you believe that? Can you believe that South Korea currently provides the, provides the world's second largest number of sending Christian missionaries to the world? Surpassed by the United States. In 2016, Korea has 21,000 missionaries working overseas in more than 190 countries, second only to the U.S. A small mustard seed of the missionaries' obedience and faith germinated and has been growing in God's timing at the hands of God. So if the only missionaries gave up planning planting a seed of gospel because of their desperate, frustrating situation. The miracle of Korean church's growth would have never taken place, and I was not able to stand before you today, this morning. <laughs> right? This is the story of God, and this is the story of how God's garden grows. It could be also our story in the church ministry here in Oxford, Aniston, Mumford, and in our daily life, our small, small kind of word and deed with big love 
can make a difference in the lives of those who need encouragement, love, and hope. I got a phone call last week from a church family sitting here this morning, and she prayed for me on the phone. She, she found a prayer for a pastor, and she read that prayer to me on the phone. That made my day. teaching the Bible to the children, youth, and young adults, and love them with the love of Jesus is to plant a seed of faith into the next generation who are the future of God's kingdom and our church. Reading and studying the word of God in our Sunday school and in a small group is one of the ways that we plant a seed of faith. We cannot see the fruit of of our efforts immediately, but in God's timing at the hands of God, the seed planted in in their hearts will surely germinate and grow and produce the fruits. We cannot overlook God's work by size, but we see the power of God's work through our small obedience. I heard the story of six women who have prayed and studied the Bible together for the last decade. During one of their their Bible studies, one of the participants told about a book she was reading on the tragedy of mass imprisonment in America. They started making connections between imprisoned and a nation where two million citizens are in jail. There's not much that six ordinary women can do in response to that vast problem. They prayed about it, and I don't know all the details, but I do know that then and there they decided to make cookies to give to prisoners. Just six people, just cookies. And yet, I am told that small, insignificant, ineffective gesture has transformed that prison. The Bible study group had to recruit more people, more friends, more neighbors to help cook, bake cookies. Suddenly, the community began relating to the prison. And most people became aware of the conditions of imprisoned people there. Relationships were formed with the imprisoned people there. How did the prayers and the efforts of just six church people bear that kind of harvest? At our church, We have known a bunch of ladies who made sandwiches for the homeless people in our local community, right? I heard some of you volunteering for Meals on the Wheels and Interfaith and Community Enabler. Through this ministry, our church became more aware of the presence of the homeless people around here. We are becoming more aware of the physically challenged people and their needs. Our church also has a ministry to teach English to Hispanics, right? Through this ministry, we have become connected to those who came from different places of the world, but who might not have got any relationship at all if we don't do this ministry. We plant a seed of hope. We plant a seed of faith. We plant a seed of love. Now we leave the rest of their ministries up to God's hands. In his time, at the hands of God, he will bring the fruition to the work. Okay. He will to bring to fruition the works that we obey to do for his kingdom. God is doing some extraordinary thing through the actions of ordinary people like you and me, right? Last week, I was here at the sanctuary to pray 
several times during the week. Pray for me, for you, and for this church. In my prayers, I talk to God, Father, this church is yours, and I am yours. If there is a dream that you want to achieve through this church, God, speak to us. If there is anything you would like to do through me, God, speak to me and give me discernment, strength, and courage to obey and get it done. God, teach us what kind of seed you want us to sow for your kingdom. I pray that God will use our small, tiny seed of obedience and faith and love and hope and produce such big branches that that the birds can perch in its shade. I pray that God will continue to bless our church more abundantly. Bless each one of you here so that we'll be a blessing for others. I pray that God prepare our spiritual soil with the heart of Jesus toward the poor, the marginalized, and the lost ones. Help us ready and willing to serve Him. God, send more people to this church. Help us to take risks and reaching out to them. This is one of the reasons why we exist for as a church, isn't it? God's kingdom come. God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Would you rise as we sing together? As we sing together, just we give ourselves to God, okay? You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb. my shame, rising again, I bless your name, you are my all in all, oh, when I fall down, when I fall down, you pick me up, when I am dry, you fill my cup, you are my all in all, Jesus, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name, sing it out, Jesus, Jesus. Lamb of God, worthy is your name, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name, this is
sometimes insignificant we are sometimes small tiny and helpless powerless God sometimes we are not sure whether we can do something for your kingdom but God thank you for calling us as your children as the kingdom worker Father help us to move on inspire our hearts and encourage our hearts to work for your kingdom, even though it is small and tiny seed of faith and obedience. God, you will use this tiny seed of faith and hope to further and advance your kingdom, God. Heavenly Father, we want to see your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, God. We want to see the lives to be transformed. We want to see more people to get to know Jesus Christ. Father, we are here. We are your church. We are your children. Fill us, mold us, and bless us, and use us for your kingdom, Father. May the peace of God, the Father, the grace of Jesus, the Son, the communion and guidance of the Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.